Hello, happy Monday. We are going to be talking about review games, and I say we because Jennifer is going to hop in here in a second, so I'm just going to give her a moment to request to join in. Um, as you are jumping in, why don't you comment and tell me how many days of school you have left, or how many weeks? Hopefully it's not months. <laughs> how many days or weeks, or how long do you have till summer, or... Maybe you're already out of school. I know some people are either really, really close or only have like one or two days left. So as you're coming in, just comment and tell me how many days left. Two class days and exams, dos semanas. Two days, oh, four weeks. See, there's such a range, 14 days, five weeks, five weeks. 17 working days left. Ooh, that's a good distinction, right? Days of school versus just days. 20 days, 20 days, hey, same, same. Five weeks left. June 9th, June 9th. So like three weeks, maybe? Cuatro días más con estudiantes. Oh. Some of you are really, really close, and some of you it's like, well, I won't say you're not close, because you're closer than you were. <laughs> so... Let's see if I can invite her in here. Uh, oh, there she is. Five days and two exam days. How many of you are still giving finals exams, finals, finals, like normal-ish? How many did trace de junio? Okay, so for those of you who are coming in, we're just, I just asked how many days you have left until school, um, until school is over, until summer starts, and we're getting all, no final exams for us this year. Okay. Is that normal for you, or is that different? No final exams this year. El 21 de julio. De julio? Senior Dereni, did you, julio, for reals? <sighs> Non-traditional finals. Just less chapters of novel, no exams here. Different than usual, okay. Oh. <sighs> Are you like a year-round school? Are you in a different part of the world? That, Like, what's, what's the deal with that? Oh, she's unable to join. Let me try again here and see if she can come in. I know she was just on, so we're just going to double check. There we go, we'll try again. Students do presentations, count that as the final. Yeah, okay, you're in the UK, okay. That explains why it's a little bit different. Have to give exams to those below B and have fewer than two tardies. Interesting that they're tying the um, tardies to the grades. I know some schools are trying to get away from that and I know some schools have um, attendance policies. I've worked in schools before where it was like, as long as you haven't missed more than, I think it was like three or five class days or something, then, you know, whatever. That was my seniors always had like this list of things, but if they did all the things then they didn't have to take their finals, but that was always the only, se only seniors. And I like teaching Spanish one and two, I only had a few, so I can't remember what all the requirements were. She just messaged me and said she's having a little bit of difficulty getting in here. I'm gonna try and invite her in again. Uh, One more time. And if, oh, it just told me that she's unable to join. That's really weird. Okay, well, we're gonna get started here and hopefully she'll be able to watch and then maybe request to join. Ugh, that's a real bummer. I was really excited to talk to her about this, but you know what? I'm excited to talk with all of you about this anyway. So we're just gonna get started. We're talking about review games. I don't know if you saw my stories earlier today. Yes, connection with live Instagrams are hard sometimes. I, I like to call it Instagram like sneezes <laughs> and they're like, no, not today. And you're like, oh, we had plans. <laughs> so hopefully she'll be able to jump in with us midway here, but maybe if she starts watching, it'll work. I don't know. Life is weird. So <sighs> here we go. Okay. So we're talking about lives. So the first thing I just wanted to let you know what my personal ex lives, we're talking about lives. We're talking about review games. <sighs> okay. My personal experience in the Spanish classroom. All of my experience has been with novices, Spanish one and two primarily. This year, I have been out of the classroom. I had 
a baby oh, almost two years ago <laughs> in the school year of 1920 I had a baby and so then it was corn teaching home with a six month old and I've been home with her this year instead so it's been much healthier for me anyways um that's pretty much where my experience is coming from so some of this if you have been teaching upper levels please feel free to chime in on what's working well for you with your upper levels of students because I'm sure that there's definitely <laughs> going to be some differences with lower and upper levels. Okay, so I wanted to first start talking about review games with technology because, right, sometimes that's our deciding factor. Like maybe at the end of the year you have to return your laptops and you have like four days of class where you can't do, oh, hey, Jen, if it lets you, try and request. Yes, there we go. Yes. You guys, I think it's gonna let her in. Okay, ooh, that's scary. Please don't say that. Okay, friends, yes, maybe. I don't know, I, just, I really thought it was gonna let her in just there. <sighs> We're talking about review games that are technology-based. So let's think some of our favorites. My first spot when I think of review games with technology is Quizlet and like all of the variations thereof, right? So maybe you're playing Quizlet Match, maybe you're playing Quizlet Live, Quizlet Live with any of the variations. Blook, I can never say this word, Blook it? Is it blue, blue or Blook it? <laughs> Somebody comment and tell me, do you say it like book or do you say it like blue? Okay, Blook it, Gim Kit, I love Gim Kit. Okay, you can hear her now, that's good. I'm gonna try and invite you in again and see. Okay. Look it or blue kit, gim kit, quizlet, quizlet live, like book. Okay, good. That's what my head has been thinking, but I thought it, I don't know why. Okay, good. Everybody say like book, like book, like book, like book. That makes me feel like less. Okay, so quizlet, quizlet live, gim kit, blook it, quizzes. How many of you like quizzes? I know they've been adding a ton of new elements. Yes, Kahoot. Kahoot is like, I don't want to say the OG, but they really have been around for a long time. And I feel like they're doing a pretty good job of like maintaining, adding some different options. So that's a really good thing. Ah, I was going to say something else about Kahoot, but it's not a review game. So we're going to keep going. Okay. Any other tech review games that you enjoy? Those are kind of like my go-tos. Word wall. The kids say it's too slow. I have been hearing good things about word wall. Okay. Word wall. So there's some other good ones. Okay, those are tech review games. For those of you watching, would you comment and let me know, have you done only the like traditional Quizlet Live or have you tried any of the variations with Quizlet Live? Okay, only Quizlet Live like traditional or have you tried any of the variations with Quizlet Live? Is why we can't rely entirely on tech for review games or anything else I because know. you never know. <laughs> what a fantastic example. <laughs> right? So what? you always got to have that backup ready to go, right? <laughs> <laughs> so we were just starting to talk about, um, well, we'll get back into that, but why don't you introduce yourself for everyone first? Okay, so hi everybody. I'm Jennifer Darrell. I go by La Profesora Inspiradora on Instagram and on my TPT store. Um, let's see, I've been teaching Spanish for a little over 10 years, I guess, at the college level. And uh, before that, I worked in an elementary school. Well, before that, I was in grad school. And then before that, I was an elementary school teacher. So I've taught everything from kindergarten up through college seniors. Um, yeah, big range, right? So, <laughs> yeah, so I kind of like... Um, Right now I'm working at a college, which I love, uh, but I'm a kid at heart, so I kind of like bring some of the things I used to do with my elementary students into the college classroom, and they tend to like it too, so. When you talk about your Spanish teaching, do you, would you usually work with novices, with upper levels, or is it kind of just like everything, like your range of it's kind of a range. Uh, the school I'm at is a pretty small school. I have a small department, so um, we kind of all have to wear a lot of different hats. So I'll teach everything from beginning and intermediate level classes up through our senior capstone class, So, which is kind of awesome because I get to like 
dabble my hands in all the different things, you know, just, and especially when I get to track kids for four years. So I'll start with them when they can barely conjugate a verb in the present tense. And by the end, they're like reading books and writing papers. And it's like, look at you, look what you can do now. This is amazing. That's so exciting. Oh, yay. Okay. Yeah. So for, for watching live, if you're not familiar with lives up here on the top, there's the title of what we're talking about. And there's a little drop down arrow. If you tap that, you can check out both of our pages. So if you're new to either one of us, or if like if you're watching from Jen's audience, or you know, watching from mine, this is your first time meeting one of us. That's where you can connect with us again for in the future. Um, so Jen, we were just in the middle of talking about with tech review games. and I had asked everybody have you done Quizlet Live just like the traditional setup or if they had done any variations? And from the comments I was seeing, mostly traditional. Have you tried the Quiz, well, have you tried Quizlet Live? Um, I haven't used Quizlet Live. I'm pretty old school, so I'm back on Kahoot. You know, I found that in the early days when Kahoot was first coming out and I loved it and my students still like it and it works pretty well. So kind of like, you know what, it's not broken. I'm not gonna fix it. And and like you mentioned, they are adding all these new features all the time. So like one of the things I love is the puzzle option. I don't know if you've gotten to play with that at all. I haven't tried that. So the puzzle is cool because instead of just like clicking the right answer, you have to actually rearrange all of them. So you type in your things in the order that you want them. So you could take just like a single word and break it down. So it becomes like a spelling exercise or you could, you know, but you can use that in so many different ways. If you wanted to review a story, it could be like different pieces of the story and they have to reorder them in chronological order. Or you could like take a sentence and break it down. So it can become like one of those scrambled sentence activities, but you're doing it with cahoots. And so it requires a little bit more critical thinking out of them, which they don't always love, but it's really, really great for them. I like that. And I like that you won't have to cut anything out. <laughs> so as you're talking about like these manipul manipulative, so many times when I do like those kinds of scrambled activities, I have to use part of my prep time to cut those things out. And then you're like, cut. Okay. <laughs> so if you haven't used the, um, some people were saying like, I've only done a tra traditional quiz live, or I haven't tried the variations. The variations are not like a different option in Quizlet Live. So what you do is you Quizlet Live like normal, you click play and Quizlet Live will divide your class into teams and the, the computer will give the kids a question and every mm -hmm. person on their team has a couple options, but only one kid has the right answer. So they have to work together. Mm -hmm. And one of my, I love that. Uh, it's really, it's kind of cool. Cause then they like start to talk and they support each other just very naturally. And one of my favorite mm -hmm. things to do with that is like a relay. So you have all of the kids sit down. So they're in their teams of like three or four and you put the computers in front of them. And <laughs> like, okay, I usually set up my class in groups. So I'll have my kids, if this is their group of four. I'll have them put all of their computers along this side and everybody else okay. stands over here. And the first kid will go and they'll run around to the other side of the group and they'll look at all of the screen and they have to pick the right one. And then they whoop, run to the end, of the end of the line and the next person goes and they find the right answer. And then they whoop to the end of the line and they keep running. <laughs> they run around in circles. <laughs> and if you have enough space in your classroom, you can like divide it. So like all the computers are on this side and all of the teams are over here and they run mm -hmm. back and forth. And it's a really nice way to add a lot of like movement in with your technology. Right. If I love that because that's one of the big downsides of the tech is that it's like we're staring at a screen some more, you know, so the fact that you're able to get them up and moving while still taking advantage of the technology is awesome. And the one thing that I will say about that is I've been in schools where the kids are allowed to carry around backpacks. And so if that's you, you have to make sure the backpacks are okay backpacks. Tripping hazard. No, no. Ah. <laughs> oh, okay. So that would be us yes, for sure. Let's see. So those are kind of like good tech games. Do you have any other favorite technology games that you would recommend? You know, honestly, like the Kahoot is probably the one I just go to all the time because it's easy. So, you know, I know it. I've got it. So, you know, sometimes I might bring some technology into games that aren't necessarily primarily technologically based, but yeah, yeah I tend to be more like an old school. I mean, I'm old. So I tend to do some more of the old like traditional pen and paper, that kind of stuff. <laughs> This, uh, we have a comment that says, I use Quizlet Live for hybrid lessons. And I have to agree, last year when I was doing um, like virtual teaching, and we were fully virtual, I wasn't hybrid, I, Quizlet Live was like one of the only things that got my kids to talk over Zoom. <laughs> like, yeah. I have not done that strategy for hybrid 
hybrid, I think, with Quizlet Live would be really difficult because they need to communicate, or they should do it with a set that they're really, really familiar with. Because um, if one student, picks, like, if a team picks the correct answer, their team score goes back to zero, and that can be really frustrating for teams. So that's why they tend to support each other. So, so hybrid might be hard unless you have a really good system for how they communicate the ones in school and the ones at home. So just something to keep in mind. Maybe if you had somebody in school in the classroom actually join the Zoom so that they can communicate more directly with the people who are at home. Right. Otherwise, I think it would be a little like, ah, persons, randomly clicking, you know, like some frustrating there. How about um, when we talk about without technology, what would you say is probably your favorite, like no tech review game or how about we do small group settings? All right, so if we're gonna do small group settings, I love just making a set of circumlocution cards and playing like a taboo style game. So breaking my class down into teams and you just give them words and they have to use circumlocution to speak in Spanish to get their classmates to guess what the words are without actually you know, using the word itself and without using English. Um, and it's great because then they're being creative with the language, right? And it's not so much just like this closed, like direct translation, but they're seeing, hey, I don't even have to know what this word is to be able to communicate about the idea. Um, but if you make it like a taboo style game, then they love it because they're competing with each other. So it keeps them engaged. And if you let other teams steal the answer afterwards and everybody's listening to everybody else, ah, so even it. if it's not their team turn, they know that like they maybe they'll get the card next. And so the, they can go back to some of those words that didn't get guessed or, you know, if you give them the chance to steal, then they have incentive to listen to everything. Yes. They're like, oh my goodness, oh my goodness. I do something similar. Well, this is this is not a no tech. <laughs> I do something similar, but I um, have to scaffold it because I usually work with novices. So asking them to create the clues is kind of hard for them. So what I do is I create sets in Quizlet where one side is the word and the other side is the description. Mm -hmm. Have the students submit descriptions and you edit them for them and just check them and make sure the language is solid. And I mean, it depends on where they are. And then I, the same game, only their cards are already created. So one person is the reader and they read the clues and the other people guess. And then if they still can't guess, then the reader kind of try and give them more hints. But it's just a mm -hmm. like easing them in. You to get in. That's fantastic. <laughs> that little... You know, and at the beginning of a unit or towards the beginning of the semester, maybe I'll give them the clues so that they kind of see it modeled for them about. And then at that point, it's just a receptive activity, right? Like just listening. Um, but it gives them ideas of what kinds of clues they can they can use. And I usually print out a little strategy card about, you know, you can do a synonym, you can do an antonym, you could, you know, talk about categories. Can you be more general? Can you be more specific? You know, and the modeling is so kind of important for them to figure it out. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. So we're getting comments about other favorite, like, no tech games and trash games. Ball, I always said one wrong. Running dictation are both coming. Up. Are you familiar with trash kit ball? Trash kit ball. <laughs> yeah. No. Any anytime you can like let them just have fun and crumple things up and throw, they love it. You know, it's like, wait, you want me to throw the paper in class? Yeah. Would you? maybe give people a quick summary of how to play that one, just in case anybody watching isn't familiar with it. Um, yeah, so there's, you can adapt it to however it's gonna work for your classroom, but basically like they have to write the answers and then they're making them into baskets and they're trying to shoot it into the trash can. You can set it up a few different ways. Um, that was a very bad summary, <laughs> I'm sorry. You wanna fill in all the details that and I'm. Crumple it up and do they only get to throw it if they're right? Oh, you can do it a few different ways. You know, you could actually set up different trash cans that are with, like different answers, like A, B, or C, and then have them throw it to the trash can that matches the right answer. And that way you can see where the things are flying. And that gives you an idea if everybody's on, on target or if, you know, uh-oh, these are going everywhere. That's something maybe we need to stop and review a little bit more. Ooh, I like that. That's kind the of way you can do it. a quick visual assessment of where everyone is. That's good. And then everyone gets to throw their paper and everyone likes throwing paper. <laughs> I like to do something similar with like snowball. Oh. They call it snowball in the winter like translating where you know they'll pick a sentence and they'll translate it and then they'll throw it at each other which well ah. oh. <laughs> um, 
somebody was asking about uh, if I could show one of those Quizlet sets. I have a blog post on that that's got a few sets linked. Um, I think it's called How to Play a Circumlocution Game Quizlet. Something like that. You can go to senioritaspanish.com and search Quizlet. It should be one of the first posts that pops up. I can link it in my stories after you do. Okay, what else? Running Dictation is such a good one. I love that one. If I was going to pick mm -hmm. my favorite no tech review game, this is like, you know, it's like, da, 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 da. you're like, pick one. <laughs> favorite so no tech review game. I think Me Lapis might be one of my favorites because it's so mm -hmm. easy to prep. Like, <laughs> so you just need a worksheet or even just a reading or like a piece of paper and two kids. You can play it in bigger groups, but I, I think it's better in twos because there's less weight and they roll a die. And if they land on a six, they get to steal the pencil from the other person. And then they write as fast as they can. And their partner is rolling and trying to get a six. <laughs> and if they get a six, they steal the pencil. Me loppies. <laughs> and like sometimes, so sometimes my class get really into calling it me loppies. And sometimes I start hearing six, six, six. So then we call it safe instead to, you know, encourage that. But. That's probably, if I had to pick one, that's probably, yeah, I, I call that game SACE. That's sometimes, there you go. some of my class periods, we call it SACE because that's what they start naturally shouting. And sometimes they call it Milapis because that's what they, and something that gets kind of fun if you want to, you don't have to, you can add in other numbers. So like if on a SACE they feel, then maybe on a trace, they have, they can steal, but they have to write with their non-dominant hand. Which is like, ooh, I love that. <laughs> they get like, uh, or, you know, okay, on a one they can steal, but they have to write standing up or they have to sit on the floor or like, so that you can add some like other things so that they're changing it faster, which is kind of nice uh -huh. in a bigger group because then, you know, there's more rotating. So, yeah. okay, if you were gonna pick your favorite, your favorite, favorite, favorite no tech review game. Yeah. Well, it depends how much time I have to prep things. I love doing like, right? Because if I've got the prep time to think things out, doing like a breakout room activity can be fantastic because it lets you set up, you know, you get to practice all sorts of different skills because each different lock or each different segment of the breakout room can be dedicated to a different kind of a skill or just practicing the same skill, but in a different way. So it lets you really cover your bases and it becomes a more thorough review activity and it's also just so freaking fun i would spend my entire life just sitting in escape rooms if i could you know so and it lets you work in like a lot of culture and authentic materials too right so i think like it's my absolute favorite thing to do with my students if i have the time to prep it, it and they can be like <laughs> I used to, I spent one summer working at an escape room and I, so I like, I learned a lot about the behind the scenes and like that sort of stuff. And every night would do like an event and we'd have to bring like, you know, 17 sets of escape rooms to this thing. And the prep leading up to that was always just like, I was just nerve wracking. Cause it's like, you know, if you miss one piece somewhere, mm -hmm. <laughs> somebody's going to have a share that falls apart, you know, or if you like forget to reset that lock or. Have you ever done any of the escape rooms online? And like, um, I know Breakout EDU has some, or I know some people make them with Google Forms. Have you ever tried one of those? I've played them myself, but I haven't made them for my students yet. Same. <laughs> okay. I haven't tried. I haven't tried making any of them. I know I've had. Um, I have a friend who's who made one for. I think it was Dia de los Muertos. We did it two years ago, and it was. It's just so fun, but it's also like one of those things that the students get. It's one of those things that you want them to do every now and then because it really helps them persevere through like just I mean even sometimes the slightest hiccup they're like I'm done I don't get it it's yeah. nice to give them these things that are like no you can't. It's a challenge we're gonna work through this <laughs> yeah it's, that's really good. well it's just fun to do the different kinds of activities because sometimes the students who maybe struggle more with the more traditional in class activities but maybe they've done a lot of escape rooms on their own and then like, it lets them kind of have the confidence and be like hey i can be the leader i know how to get us through this you know or if you've designed one where it's all these different skills coming together usually somebody each person is going to have something some point of the day that they're the one who's needed they have the skill to get through this thing like they know that i need what i need to do with this map you know or good for them to like have that 
that time to just like shine and feel confident about something. So, yeah. Okay. So, if we were about, um, I know that that usually winds up being a small group. Do you do any like whole class review games, like everybody all playing together? Um, usually when I do a whole class thing, I'm still breaking them into teams, but it's more like the teams competing, like with the circumlocution playing Taboo, or, you know, I've set up a pretty basic Jeopardy style game or, you know, things like that. So I like to have it where the whole class at least has to listen to each other and they have chances to like jump in and steal other people's answers or whatever. Um, but usually they're at least working as part of a smaller team. Okay. Okay. Um, I will very rarely do a whole, like like that whole class, everybody has to be working together or listening together thing. I do that so rarely. I want to say I maybe do it like once a year because it stresses me out. <laughs> it really does. Like, you know, I, I feel like the show host moment is not something I enjoy. <laughs> it's like not a place that I just am very happy in my classroom. So I usually, usually avoid those. But um, one of my favorite options, I don't know, Senora Chase has a blog. Her, one of my favorite posts from her is the lucky reading game. And so what they do, is, it's a reading, like a post reading activity. And so you read and you ask a question. And then after they answer the quote, well, after they answer the question, every student holds up their answer. And then they, um, oh, I'm doing a terrible job of explaining this. <laughs> if you want better explanations, it's your Senora Chase's blog, the lucky reading game. But basically after they answer, they draw a card and that card uh -huh. determines their point. So it could be like, yay, plus 10, it could be minus 10, you know, whatever. And that kind of that element of chance is a fun way to keep everybody engaged because it's not possible for one, well, it's possible, it's less likely for one team to just like trounce. <laughs> mm -hmm. And then even if they are in the lead, it could be like, oh, now you've lost negative, you know, 10,000 points or yeah. <laughs> it resets everybody. Yeah, no. Martina Bex has a version of that on her Comprehensible Classroom blog, The Unfair Game. Oh, yeah. They're it's basically really the same, right? They're, they are, um, I, I love that kind of and, element of, like, oh. <laughs> And you can let the teams choose whether they're going to keep the points or give them away, but they have to choose before they know what the points are. And so it can be, the, the score is just very so wildly. And, and it's, it's nice because then you don't feel like, one team ends up like feeling bad because they have so few points and it, it's a reflection of their learning. It's just no reflection of chance. Yep. Just, just a game. And then no, yeah, nobody feels bad about themselves or maybe they're grumpy about it, but at least they're like engaged and grumpy. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> like they leave class being like, hum, 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 and you're like, but you're going to talk about it. <laughs> 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 Absolutely. Awesome. Okay. So let's see what else we talked about whole class, small group partner. How about, do you play any individual review games where like a student would just play it by themselves? Um, I did a little bit last spring when we first had to all flip virtual and that I would, the cahoots that I would normally have done with them as a class, I just set them to be like the review mode or the challenge mode so that they could do them at home. But other than that, like I really like the collaboration and I like having them work together on things. Sometimes I might set something up where they have a choice whether they want to work on something with a partner or small group or work individually because I know I have some students who are just lone wolves and they would so much rather mm -hmm. be working there on their own. And I mean, you can't cater to that all the time because in real life, you got to get along with people. But sometimes, you know, sometimes I'll try to give them some choices. I do that more with projects than with review activities, I would say. Yeah, I, I, do, I very rarely will do like an individual review game, but... Um, one of the ones that I talked about this earlier in my stories and somebody was asking me about it. So I wanted to make sure we brought it up is the, it's like grammar casino or I can't remember what she, if that's what she calls it. Or oh, I'm about that. I saw that in your story and I'm not familiar with that one. It's super fun. And it's, it's kind of like, it could be this big whole class thing and it can be very individual. So the, the basics of it are that students have the sentence what involves the structures, the vocabulary, you know, whatever it is that you want. And they start with like their points. And for each sentence, they either have to say like, yes, this is accurate. I bet 20 is that it's right. Or they have to say, no, this is it. Maybe they're bad. And then as you go through the game, you, you tell them like, oh, yep, this one was correct. If your bet was right, then you get a 20 points or, you know, however you 
betting system is working by the mm-hmm. they you know <laughs> I said you win if you're positive <laughs> or you <laughs> left the casino with more than what you started with <laughs> that kind of but it turned into like a small group or a whole class thing because who left with the most points or you know who got the most right or that kind of thing is really simple to add so um, Rosa Rosa has a bunch of them um, her store name is is changed it used to be tapas to educando entre mundos i think now yeah I, I, okay. will take her. <laughs> I will take her in the comments everybody is like oh that sounds really fun and i want to try that so that way check it out um do you see we have a question that says how the pop game i have not have you heard of that the pop the pop up uh-uh. nikki if you know what Tell us more about it in the comments because I have no idea. <laughs> so tell us more if it's something we need to try at some point in time. I would love to hear about it. <laughs> it sounds like fun. It does. I'm like, I'm imagining like. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I have no idea what your screen looks like. I can see us as like two. So <laughs> yeah. uh, floating. Okay. <laughs> All right. How about outside versus inside do you ever take your kid- kiddos oh she says it's a link thank you nikki i would love to learn more and then i can awesome. that way if anybody else wants to check it out thank you great uh, jen do you ever take your not kiddos your college students <laughs> they're my kiddos I, they're totally my kiddos <laughs> I, I just call everyone kiddos and, and <laughs> Oh, I love getting them outside when I can. Um, you know, it's a little bit harder with COVID with like, you know, the masks and everything. It would be nice to be outside um, just even for safety reasons, but then you also can't hear. <laughs> um, but in the past, yeah, I've loved getting them outside. Um, you can't have that be your only plan because then if it rains or anything like that, then that's a big not so good. I came up with this activity once I called it subjunctive soccer. Um, and I would go outside with a soccer ball, and it, it was a little bit complicated, but if I could get the rules across to them, then it actually worked pretty well. The idea was that, like, a subjunctive structure was kind of like kicking the ball on the goal, but you needed a subjunctive kicker to get it there. So if you didn't have the right, like, phrase, like one of those weirdos from the first half of the sentence, then you weren't going to be kicking that verb into the subjunctive. So I would show them an expression like um, dudo que or spero que, but then maybe it would be pienso que. So some of them were needed the subjunctive, some of them didn't, as I threw a ball at them. And if it needed the subjunctive, they were supposed to try to score a goal. And then if it didn't take the subjunctive, they kicked it to a pet teammate or something like that. Um, and then we had whiteboards out there. So depending on what outcome they were going for, they would have to race to see who could like finish the sentence correctly first. Um, I would have to go back and like look up. I had all these rules and everything it was a little bit complicated, but it was kind of fun. And they liked being able to get outside and kick the ball around. And it kind of gave a physical reinforcement to the idea of like some things take the subjunctive, some things do not. Um, so anytime we can get them outside, you know, like they love it. It's fun. Um, I've set up like these... I call them my quests or my like role play activities where I send them all over campus, but I have a little bit more flexibility because I've got older kids. Um, So I don't have to necessarily stay with them all the time. Um, But if you can get them outside and moving around, just some kind of a scavenger hunt, those kinds of things can work really well. Um, But you just have to have a backup just in case of like weather. Sometimes, well, I live up, I live up in the north. (laughs) So it's cold for a really long time up here. And so when it finally starts to get nice out, everybody just gets so like, we have to get out, you know, like, it's like after all this time in the gray cold, vitamin D comes out and we're all like, yes. <laughs> so once it, once it hits that point in the year, I try and find like every excuse I can to take kids outside. And mm-hmm. it means that I would send like a staff wide email that just says like, FYI, Spanish students are going to be all over the building. If you see anybody doing anything they're not supposed to do, kick them back to my classroom. <laughs> I'll be around. <laughs> but just like, help me. And that was something that I, it took me a really long time feel comfortable enough with my high school students that they could like go out and about and once I finally yeah. realized, like hey you can tell the staff if you see a student doing something they're not supposed to do and they belong to me like they're mine I'll take responsibility them for them like <laughs> no not a big, not a big deal it's easy to handle so that made a big transition for me to be able to like act take them outside more consistently once it got nice out 
just wondering what is a good game for the very last day of school so any if anybody's watching and they have any recommendations for her go ahead and drop them jen do you have any recommendations for what's a good game for the very school? very last day Ooh, that's see i'd be tempted to pull out a breakout on the last day because you can because it's so flexible you can pull in everything you've done all year long and it ends the game on like a really positive like ends the year on a big note of like, this was the coolest thing we ever did. I can't wait to get back to Spanish class in the fall so we can do more of this. Um, but again, just because of its versatility and how you can like really tailor it to anything you're doing. But then also that might be the time of year where you're like, I'm really tired and I'm not planning all of that. So, <laughs> you know, also just have like five, by that point, you've done so many of these games with your students all year long. I love giving kids choice whenever you can. So you could have, five or six that are easy to go, you know, don't really need a lot of prep and just say, hey, which one do you want to play? Uh, that would be kind of my, re well, my recommendation, right? So <laughs> the school that I worked in in Illinois had this really weird thing. I don't know if other schools do this. I'd never heard of another school doing this. We would do finals. And then after finals, the next day, the students would come for a half day of school. And it was like to get their grade. But every, every time I was like, we're not done grading. <laughs> Like, How could you possibly be doing grading? <laughs> and so inevitably it turned into like teachers cleaning and grading. Some, most students just didn't show up because their parents didn't make them. Some of them did because their parents made them. And some of them did come to how their final went, you know, whatever. <laughs> so on that day of school, I would, I would usually like just go into my cabinet and be like, <laughs> here are all the things thing we've done pick one or i would bring um honestly for the very last day of school i i bring my board games from home i love i don't yeah. like forbidden desert or forbidden island but they're um like cooperative problem solving games so oh, there's cool. like it's kind of like pandemic <laughs> if you're well, everybody knows pandemic <laughs> 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 where there's some sort of issue and the players have to work together to solve and win the game. So honestly, if it's the last day of school and you're like, we're done with all of our content, I don't feel the need to do anything else, then I'd love to do it. Building, relationship, problem solving a day. Mm -hmm. Those kinds of board games that are like, work together, talk through things, reason it out, but they're, yeah, they don't have any. <laughs> Anything different. You know, just bringing in a bunch, whole bunch of name tags and a Sharpie and then playing 20 questions. Oh, yeah. That's a fun one, too. Like, <laughs> that for hours. They love it. And, you know, you have zero prep because they just come up with the things, stick them on each other's foreheads, and they're, they're off to the races. Who am I? <laughs> yeah. I love them. Um, so we're like, I have a set of Jenga blocks where I wrote questions on them. And so I might just bring those in and let them play Jenga. And like, you, you draw a block, you have to answer the question, and then you put it back on the top. I love it's like that. any of those super like easy things. I have a whole bunch of those that are like, they're like this tall. I got them at the dollar store and they all have just like, I think I just numbered every single one of them. Well, I numbered and lettered them. So that way if, you know, seven fell on the floor, I that it was seven from set G, not just seven that, you know, went with whatever. <laughs> Those are kind of handy. Well, okay. So anybody watching, if you have any last questions or things to share about review games, maybe you have one that's like your all-time favorite and you're like, how have they not talked about this one yet? No. Let us know, please. <laughs> please. Feel free to comment and tell us, like, you know, what's your favorite review game that you play with your students? Tell us, you know, is it technology-based? Is it not? Do you play it as a whole class? Do you play it in small groups, in pairs? Do they play it one at a time? You know, what's your favorite one? <laughs> and, and like, how did we not mention it yet? <laughs> exactly. I'm going to scroll through really quickly and try and make sure that we did questions. I know some little while here, they were kind of coming in fast. So I wanted to make sure that we. And Jen, while I'm checking that, you tell them about the grab bag and the grab bag, the bag thing that's happening right now. Oh, yes. This is amazingness. I'm still here, right? Oh. Yep. Okay. So my screen is going crazy. Um, so it's amazing because there's what, 11 of us participating. I think it's over a hundred dollars worth of resources that are all completely free. Like I already, first day I was like, I'm going to sign up and get all of these too. All right. Um, 
And so, yeah, it's a hundred over a hundred dollars worth of stuff, all completely free. Um, so you just give us your name and email, and you get a link to download all of them. And there's so many different kinds of activities and resources. Um, it's just fantastic. And why would you not take that free things? Like I, I'm so confused. Like if you don't want that, like can I also have money from you? Because apparently, <laughs> so I say to my friends all the time, like it's an awesome activity that's just like for credit and then I'm like well if you don't want your points do you also give away your money because I will take that oh the people who are looking for the link I just put the link in the comments so if you're watching right now you might have to scroll a little bit but it's b-i-t-l-y spanish grab bag giveaway 21 or it's linked in my profile so if you go to my page and then click it's big button right there I didn't want anybody to miss it so yeah and I'm with you Jane. I, I like started peeking through the file and I was like oh yeah but what Right? Like, I've got them all down. I'm like, oh, I gotta play this. Wait, I gotta play that. I gotta play this. I gotta play that. And like, saving them and sorting them into my files. Like, this one's gonna go huh? here and this one's gonna go here. So if you, here? you're like, make a little note to myself about. Yes. So if you, if you didn't get a chance to get that yet, I just put the link in the comments. It's also on both of our pages. So um, you can tap up here where the title for the live is and there's a little arrow and then you can see both of our pages, both of our profiles and you can get to it from either of us. Um, if you have any questions, if you're sweet. Oh, I think I forgot to mention that. Oh, the, oh, to catch that. Yeah. If you, have, if you need it. Only. Yeah. Oh, the, the deadline. Yeah. Um, yeah. Feel free to comment and ask any questions and we will help you out as much as we can. I will try and put links to the things that we discussed in my stories probably tomorrow because they were getting a little long today, but I'll make sure to do that. Um, Jen, do you have anything you want to add before we wrap it up? No, I think that was about what we came in wanting to talk about. All right. So, well, thank you. This was fun. I mean, it was my fun. first. I know like, Instagram was a little shaky there for us, but I'm glad you were able to come in. So I had a lot of fun talking with you. Yeah. Hopefully. I did too. Great. <laughs> All right. Well, you have a great rest of your Monday. All right. Bye.